Well, good afternoon, everyone. Um, ready to start spring ball. Had a really good uh, winter with Coach Drew and his staff, um, putting on a lot of muscle mass and, and guys getting stronger and excited about uh, a lot of our younger players are going to get a great opportunity this spring uh, to go out and, and see how much they've improved from uh, the fall and from bowl prep, it doesn't seem like it was that long ago that we were in bowl prep, you know, being the uh, end of December, but uh, uh, it's upon us. What we'll do is we'll have two practices this week on Tuesday and Thursday. Those will be kind of our helmet and short practices, um, some extra meeting time, a little extra walkthrough time uh, because we don't have practice on the weekend and then uh, obviously go on spring break. And then when we come back from spring break, we'll get right into it and have three practices a week, um, Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, and continue to progress forward. We, it's, we're, we're excited. We've got some uh, different things that we're going to do, both sides of the ball, offensively and defensively. I'll let Coach Wells, Coach Riley, Coach Malone, and Coach Klanderman talk about those things um, when they get an opportunity to speak to you. But uh, we're, we're doing some different things, um, not making wholesale changes, but uh, we're always trying to tweak and improve. So it'll be a, a fun spring to see. Uh, how much stuff we can get in and, and see uh, how many how much guys have improved. What are your hopes in accomplishing things here in these first two before spring break? One is is all the new guys, whether they're transfers or, or mid-year guys, getting them to understand how we do things and how we practice, um, getting Coach Wells up to speed on how we practice, being the, uh, the new full-time coach. Uh, and then uh, just getting back into football mode. You know, we've been in so much conditioning and, and, and weightlifting mode that we're just trying to get into um, learning how to practice again and, and uh, familiarizing ourselves with our, with our base offense and defense. Um, on the field stuff seems to be growing in the amount yeah. of things that coaches have to worry about. Is it good just to get back on the field and, and yeah, yell at some kids? Yeah, uh, without a doubt. Um, you know, the month of February – uh, for the most part was good because of not being off campus uh, recruits not being on campus just trying to you know kind of recharge yourself and and uh, we did some professional development but yeah there's all those things that are that are still on the horizon and we're still we're still hearing different things that are going on um, with different committees but uh, it'll be fun to just get out there and practice our guys are excited about practicing um, once again we had a good winter but now it's it's time to go out on the grass and and, and compete and everyone's intrigued with Avery. I saw a photo of him. It looks like he's put on even more muscle mass in the off season. Um, th that room has gone from kind of experienced and deep, or at least talented and deep, to a lot of unknowns. How much do you need to accomplish with that? An awful lot. Um, you know, we're going to give uh, all of our young players an opportunity uh, to compete. I'm excited for Jacob Knuth. Uh, who's now been in the in the program? It was good for Jacob to take all those reps uh, as the backup to Avery in the bowl game, and I, I think it was his chance to really learn what we're doing offensively. Uh, now he needs to take that next step. Avery needs to take that 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 next step and continue um, to build upon what Avery did throughout the bowl prep. And I'm excited for for both those guys and for all those quarterbacks with Coach Wells in the room. Um, somebody that's a, a, an established, really a professional guy that uh, understands all the details of being a quarterback. And, um, you know, him mixing with Coach Riley, we're going to do some different things offensively. But uh, I'm excited for those guys to make that next step. There's one or two positions you're really curious to see how they play during spring. Well, uh, I'd say even though we have a lot of returners there, we lost a lot of people in the offensive line, so I'm just kind of interested there to see who's going to be that guy that was the KT or Gilly or, or Biebs that, that were really boisterous leaders. I think we have um, potential to have some really good players there uh, from a leadership standpoint, but we have a lot of young guys. You know, Sam Hecht comes to mind, Andrew Linegang comes to mind that it's now their time. John Pastore, we have some really good players that have been in the program for quite a while but haven't had that opportunity to play yet. Um, so that's the first position I'd look at. And then just, you know, with all the things that happened to us at linebacker last year, losing so many guys, um, not all of them are back from, from injury, but uh, – there's some experience back there with Dez and Austin uh, and then some of those other guys that either 
were injured uh, that we're hoping to at least get some reps or at least learn what they're doing a little bit more, the Asa Newsoms and stuff. Uh, I, I'm excited that uh, we have a good amount of depth at that position. How do you feel about tight end without, without Ben? Um, yeah, uh, you don't replace Ben Sennett uh, with the production that he had, and, and uh, it was fun to see him perform as well as he did at the Combine. It doesn't surprise me at all just because of what uh, – uh, I know Ben's competitiveness and athleticism, but uh, you know, you know, Will Swanson coming back was really important for us. Swanee to to come back and, and play another year, um, to be that experienced guy along with a lot of a lot of good young players. Um, I think we saw glimpses of what Garrett Oakley could do uh, in the bowl game. Oak had a really good season, but was banged up for the first half of the season, so maybe we didn't get to see his full potential, but. Uh, Seeing him put on the weight, seeing guys like Braden Lofton put on the weight, I, I'm excited about some of those young players, and uh, uh, it's going to be a, a lot of guys contributing in the tight end room. I just want to ask about you and Matt Wells. After coaching against him uh, for a few years at Texas Tech, what is it like to have him on staff and you two working together now? Well, it helps me because it gives me another sounding board of somebody to visit with uh, that's got head coaching experiences, that's been in my shoes, been in my seat, um, and understands the day-to-day -day operations um, for me to bounce ideas off of, but it also just somebody that's that's been in the profession, that's somebody that's, you know, he's coordinated, he's coached quarterbacks, he's been a head coach. Some of the calming things that he has for our offense and, and pushing Coach Riley and, and pushing our offensive staff to, to continue to, to find more ways to do things, uh, maybe easier ways, simpler ways. Uh, I, I'm excited that some of the things that he's brought to our past game um, that uh, we'll get to start working on this spring. But uh, he's been uh, he's been everything that I thought he, he has been, and, and it's been fun for him because I've just seen Matt just jump in with our staff and with our players and, and build relationships really quickly. At defensive end behind Mott, uh, you seem to be very talented but very young. So how does that position kind of shake out? Uh, a lot of competition. You know, we have Stuffel being back. Stuff uh, coming off of a, a, an off-season surgery, so we'll limit him a little bit this spring. We'll limit Mott a little bit this spring. But you're right. You know, we, we're, you know, whether it's it's Toby that's now moved there uh, full time, to Jordan Allen, to to Cheedy, to Ryan Davis, uh, Donovan Ryman. We have a lot of lot of good athletic guys there. That um, um, you know, we we. Did a little bit of four down stuff in the bowl game, and I know that we'll continue to to uh, look at some of those things, whether it's on just on third down or, or something um, specific to a to a game plan or to a personnel group. But we have some depth there. But those kids are inexperienced; they're just really explosive guys that are already in that 245 to 270 range. That makes us a little bit bigger and a little bit uh, uh, more stout in there, and and just gives us a, a, a lot more bodies that um, you know we don't all have just edge guys. We have guys that can play inside as well. Excuse me. Similarly, at uh, running back, you've got DJ Giddens back uh, behind him. It's a little bit of yep. uh, inexperience. What do you get from Joe Jackson and guys that are yeah. incoming? Well, it's it's you know similar to the quarterback position. Everybody knows what we have at quarterback, what we have at running back. But now we've got to find out, you know, who that next guy is. Um, you know, we're excited about Joe. Joe's a talented player. La James White's really talented. Um, you know, we we have um, a lot of guys there that um, are going to get an op opportunity this spring because we probably won't give DJ a ton of reps. Um, but we've got to find out. You know, is there is there a guy that catches the ball better? Is there a guy that's a little bit better on uh, pass protection on third down? Guy that uh, uh, can be uh, in the backfield, out of the backfield. You know, DJ was the was the surprise a little bit for us in the fact he did it all. I mean, it, running the ball, pass protection. We knew he was going to be really good. DJ was so talented out of the backfield catching the football. Um, are we going to have that? total package by committee or do we have one or two guys that can that can do all three of those skills i know they haven't practiced yet but is there a incoming transfer or early and early true freshman that's impressed you with how they conducted themselves so far um you know 
I, I'd leave somebody out. I, I'm excited about uh, um, a couple of the uh, a couple of transfer secondary guys. You know, Jordan Riley, Dante Thomas. See what those guys can do. They're going to get opportunities right away because B.J. Payne and Colby McAllister are being held out this spring from injuries that they had. So those guys are going to get probably the fastest looks simply because of of the, the amount of um, depth that we lost there and, and uh, wanting to replace those guys. Um, Callan Bard is another kid that's a, a, a young freshman that came in as a secondary uh, player for us that's an early early enrollee. He's going to get a lot of reps. But I think it's as much the kids that – that uh, you know the Joe Jacksons that didn't play last year that are going to get that chance to Jack Fabris to Mikey Bergeron. I mean, uh, across the board we have a lot of those type uh, players. Will Anxio uh, is going to get an opportunity. I'm, I'm excited for all those kids that that didn't play this first year that have had a year in the weight room. Uh, I've had a year of of uh, learning the offense or defense or on special teams, getting opportunities to participate and practice a lot in bull prep. Um, those kids are bigger, stronger. Now, how much has the game slowed down for them is, is the thing that we're looking for this spring. You probably didn't get to unlock Keegan Johnson as much as you wanted to last year. I think health played a role. What are the hopes and expectations on that front? Yeah, um, we saw glimpses of, of a guy that could be as good as there is in the Big 12. And uh, I think Keegan would tell you that. It's just him um, getting healthy and staying healthy. And I think him knowing – what we're looking for now all year round of, of nobody takes care of their body uh, and, and it, it tends to their body with recovery like Keegan. I think he does a phenomenal job, but now he knows there's he knows what to expect in every phase we're doing, whether it's winter to spring to summer to fall. Um, he's had a great uh, spring and winter, gotten stronger, gotten leaner. Um, but, you know, you saw that with some of his um, – some of the playmaking ability in the bowl game, just you know, going up and snagging the ball, making some c tough contested catches, um, and w we've got to be able to move our wide receivers around. You know, we feel like we have uh, enough bodies there, enough good, talented guys there. We've got to do two things: we've got to move guys around to get them in the best spot to be successful, and we've got to simplify some things in the wide receiver room. That's something that we've done or we've spent the most time on, I would say, on an offensive standpoint this winter and, and early spring is simplifying it because we have some really talented guys that we kind of made it too complicated, in my opinion, for those kids to get on the field, and we're going to simplify it so we can get our best players on there. The proposal of an early signing period in June has been floated. Do you think that's a good idea, bad, and different? Yeah, I, I'd be a proponent of it. I, I, I think it's a great idea um, for a variety of reasons. The easiest thing would be the fact that um, these kids, for the most part, know where they want to go. Uh, all of them are, are making all their <clears throat> visits in the summer. Uh, I think it would clean some things up for everybody if we had that signing period, whatever, it's the last Wednesday in June. Um, it allows us as coaches to know who we're tracking academically. Uh, I know that's one of the concerns, but you know I, I'm not tracking maybe 300 kids in, in the fall. We're tracking maybe the 15 we'd sign and another 30 or 40 that potentially could sign. I think it'd be I think it'd be a positive. I think it would it would make quality of life for assistance a little bit better um, in the in the fall as opposed to you know. You're still calling guys, but you're shrinking that list to call. You may be going out and seeing a guy or two in your open week, watch a game. But um, I think it'd be a positive. I don't know if it's going to pass, but I think it'd be a real positive. Coach, how is Connor Riley? How have you seen him kind of settle into his new role over the last couple months? Uh, I think he's more comfortable. I think he was, you know, drinking through a fire hose during the uh, bull prep. Uh, in fact, I know he was, and um, because that was just a crazy time in December. There's a lot of things going on in the month of December if you're a football coach. Um, so he was really, I think, um, going crazy. But uh, he settled in. I, I think it's great that we have a full staff now in there to help him uh, and bounce ideas off of. Um, and, uh, you know, he's he's really good at what he does uh, as – you guys have heard me say it. I think he's the best offensive line coach in the country. Uh, now we have to uh, make it easier for him.
by simplifying some things in the past game, um, by having I new ideas through our other coaches, uh, which I've seen and witnessed and, and been a part of with some of the new things that we're going to do offensively. But, but make no mistake, our success running the football is because of the things that Riles has implemented and the things that we're going to continue to do. Uh, elevating Clint Brown, what, what, what kind of went into that decision and, and, and what do you like about having him in, in that new role? A um, couple things. Uh, found out in the month of December I couldn't do all this stuff by myself um, with all the coaches on the road, and we were missing a key piece probably in what we are calling the roster management job. Um, and Clint's been a, a coach, a well-respected coach, um, has the respect of, of all of our coaches on the fourth floor, has the respect of, of the recruiting staff and the support staff on the third floor, has the respect of the players. And, you know, we were something that I was pushing for during December is getting another person in administration um, to help myself out with the roster management, with the portal, with the with name image likeness, with all that stuff. And um, Clint's going to be a great person for me to lean on. And so um, we have to replace him as an analyst on the offensive side. But I think it, 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 it probably utilizes Clint's skill set really well. And it's something that he's really excited about because it combines everything. I mean, you get to evaluate as if you're a coach. You get to, you get to evaluate as a recruiter. You get to be kind of a, um, a salary cap guy as a GM. But uh, um, he's an experienced guy that I have a lot of trust in and a lot of faith in, and, and he's going to help me a bunch. You mentioned that next step for Avery. In, in your mind, what does that look like? What are you looking for? I think it's just continuing to slow the game down for him from a mental side of things. I think physically everybody sees and everybody knows the tremendous talent he has and tremendous gifts he has throwing the football, ability to run the football. Um, now it's just continuing to slow the game down for him mentally. It's the pre-snap pictures. It's uh, making sure that on the snap that pre-snap picture has stayed or if it has changed, what has it changed to? Um, and that just that, that's a repetition thing. And I was excited because he got so many reps in, in bowl prep that you saw him start off really well in the bowl game. Um, we sputtered a little bit offensively, no panic. And all of a sudden, we turned it back on, and he just continued to improve as the game went on. And he didn't um, didn't make too much of it. He stayed under control. He let the game come to him. He threw it away when he had to throw it away. Uh, I'm just excited that that one game of whatever we played, 65, 70 snaps, is going to make him so much better uh, as we get into spring and as we get into fall because he's he's had that. He's played glimpses. He played a half here, played series in different games. But having that full game where he knew he was the guy, uh, I, I think is is obviously he's a really confident guy anyway, but it's, it's slowed down for him and it's going to continue to slow down. And I, I think – he and Coach Wells, from a personality standpoint, are really, really similar. Um, he's met with him a ton on his own just coming up and building that relationship, which has been cool to see. Um, and those two are, are in sync right now. Uh, your first practice is, sounds like a kind of an initiation yep. thing, but was it by choice to have the two before spring break, or was that just more the – the way the yeah, it's how the fell. calendar's gone for us, Arnie, the last two or three years, and we have found that we've liked it um, in the fact that we get a little bit more meeting time and a little bit more walk-through time this first week in having those two practices that aren't that long of practices anyway. Plus, it's you're not hitting, you're not you know going to the ground on anything, you're not stripping the ball and stuff. We're trying to make sure that. Uh, we're not, we don't play K-State this year on the schedule, so we want to make sure that we keep guys healthy and um, get, them, get them moving around. But it's just it's something that I've, I've done in the past, and I liked it. The coaches liked it. We would get those two. And then when we come back from spring break, we can just roll. We get a workout with True on Monday, and then we can start rolling on Tuesday on um, with our padded practices and, and a little bit more contact. And, um, you know, we're also talking. These guys are. These guys know what's on the horizon. They know when Friday, what what happens on Friday, and they get out of here for a week. And and uh, um, they're still 
college guys that uh, I remember that as well, that uh, you know when spring break is. And so um, we're going to have plenty of energy and enthusiasm on Tuesday and Thursday, and we'll have a ton of energy on Friday after the morning uh, lift and meetings because those guys get a little bit of a break. Obviously the energy level, but any concern that you lose anything from the the first couple practices? No, nah, not, not, not really. I mean, these – Everybody that's not new has been through this before. We've done this the last few years. Coach, I was wondering, you mentioned Ben's performance at the Combine this weekend. Uh, how much did you pay attention to it, and was there anything that stood out from any of your former players? Yeah, I think all of them performed really well. I, did, I don't sit and watch it anymore. I see clips, and, and um, uh, people show me when different guys. I thought, you know, Beeb's running the 40 looked really good. You know, you run a five flat, and you're – 322 or 325 pounds is pretty good. I thought KT looked looked good. I thought Khalid Duke looked really good in, in his movement skills, um, doing some off-the-ball stuff. But uh, it's a great opportunity for those guys and to be on that stage and, and perform at a high level. And, you know, they've been preparing their whole life for that moment, for those, you know, the few hours that they're out there. And uh, obviously you could tell all four of them did a great job of, of preparing their body uh, for the combine. Similar here, Coach, but I wanted to ask you about Coop specifically. As NFL teams look at him, what what would you say they should know about Cooper Beebe? Um, one, uh, he knows the game of football really well. He can play multiple positions. The only position he really hasn't played is center, and I really think he could play it. So I think his him being so versatile is going to allow him to, if he's not a starter, which I still think he will be a starter, he has the ability to back up several spots, um, and he's just – he's so physical. Um, he understands the game. He's a great communicator. Uh, he's a durable guy, and uh, somebody's going to get a, a, a steal whenever it is. And, and I know he's moved up the ladder. I don't know if he's going to be early second, late first, if he dips in the middle of the second somewhere. I, I'm not sure. I'll, I'll get a chance to see him, I think uh, – in the next few weeks, because I think all those guys are going to be back here a little bit. I, I t connected with Ben. He's going to come back for a little bit as well. So uh, I, I'm excited about all those guys. I think all of them did nothing but help themselves at the Combine. And then I know last year you guys had a couple guys that surprised you and wanted their choice to come back. Was it the same this year? Were there any guys that surprised you, or, or were these more – routine no none of them are routine you know you recruit the heck out of the guys to to get them to come back and and what their what their value is to to the football team and you know whether it's it's stuff that has been a really good contributor to, to us to Mott and Austin Moore that have been staple starters for a few years um, it's critical for us to get those guys back because they know the standard. They know the expectation. They know what it's like to win a championship. And for those guys, I think it's so valuable for us because when you're graduated, some of them pretty much have their masters to say, I could go anywhere to play and I'm going to come back and, and play for K-State because it means so much to them. And so uh, excited to get all those guys back. When you describe the momentum and maybe the bounce and the step coming off a bowl win that you've been able to witness here during the winter months. Yeah, it's always good to, to, to springboard into your next season with a big bowl win. We saw it happen uh, at the Texas Bowl, uh, winning that game and then leading us into a Big 12 championship. Um, that's, you know, I don't know if that'll happen, but I can see the energy from our guys. You know, you win that uh, last game and um, do it when a lot of people doubted us because we had lost so many guys and we didn't have a, a full complement of coaches, didn't have a full complement of a roster, but those kids weren't going to be denied. And we beat a really good football team in North Carolina State that you could see the energy. And I think you know, we have our leadership council of 25 guys. We don't elect captains till the fall, but these 25 guys – uh, that are on the leadership council have done a phenomenal job of of leading and holding each other uh, and their and their peers to a high standard every day. When you think of Jaden Jackson, what comes to mind first? Um, a guy that's got to be consistent and continue to get better. Uh, he, I've seen him perform really well. It's got to be consistent. Uh, excited that he came back because I think there's more in the tank there for him. How about Cadzer? Um, take the next step. He's got to take the next step. Terrific football player. Can he take the next step as a player? Can he take the next step as a leader? Because we need him to. 
Coach, we reported earlier today that you've made a hire for a special teams analyst. Is, is that something you can comment on yet? Yeah, I, I don't know if it's official, but Coach Katzer, um, who we've gotten to know a little bit through the process, you're right, he, Tui was out at Utah State too, um, and uh, Wellesley was out there, but uh, uh, what a coup for us to get a guy that's got as much experience he does in, in the National Football League, and he's from Scott City, Kansas, and so um, he wanted to come back to the great state of Kansas and, and uh, uh, be a part of the Wildcats. So I think he'll be here sometime tomorrow, but uh, excited about him and him joining our program. An ideal candidate for you to send to the nut fry. Absolutely. <laughs> now, I will be there as well with him, but uh, you know he, he's excited about going to the nut fry. Everybody should be excited about going to the nut fry. It's one of the best events you have here.